One of the problems that people have with the iOpt on SkyGuider Pro is that the included latitude base really isn't that precise and it can make your life a lot more difficult at night, especially if you're gonna be doing deep space astrophotography. To start, the screws here on the front to adjust your azimuth are hard to get a hold of and the adjustments are kind of slow and it's just really not that easy to do. We also have the altitude knob here on the back that tends to make things jump up and down. You look through the polar scope and I've seen this thing break off more than five or six times with different students. So it's not really that sturdy. And overall, the base itself leaves a lot to be desired. And that's where William Optics comes in. They released their version of the latitude base, which is a huge step up. And I'm currently looking at the high latitude base from William Optics. So that's what we're gonna be looking at in today's video review. First, I want to thank AginaAstro.com. They were kind enough to send me out this particular review unit that we'd be looking at today. Again, this is the high latitude version, but you can also get it in a low latitude version. So the way this works is it just depends on where you're at on Earth. The high latitude version is good from about 60 degrees to 30 degrees, while the low latitude is designed from about 7 to 34 degrees. Now, I personally went with the high latitude base because I'm normally uh, in North America. But the problem I had with this particular base is that I'm down here in Florida for an astrophotography workshop. So I was gonna do my polar alignment. I want to adjust my az or the altitude screws and I got down to about 30 and then it just stopped. It would not go below 30, even though on the base here, it's marked from 60 all the way down to 10. So at first I thought, okay, maybe there's something wrong. I wasn't really sure what's going on. And one of my students brought to my attention that you can actually solve this problem fairly easy. So I did a little bit of research and I found a video from Orion2400 here on YouTube. And he shows you how to take the whole base apart. And essentially what you have to do is that there's a little stopper on the underside of the base here. If you move that over to the next groove, you can now use the base below 30 degrees. And as far as I'm aware, we're essentially converting the high latitude base into the low latitude base. Again, the problem I had is that I reached 30 degrees on the high latitude base. I could not get to 27, which I needed to do. So if you take the base apart and do a little bit of configuration, you can solve that problem fairly easy. And again, I would point you over to Orion 2400's video here on YouTube for more information. But that's really the only problem I have with the uh, William Optics base is just that you have to make those adjustments to use the base as you travel especially if you're going to go below 30 degrees. But beyond that, if you can get over that little hurdle, the base is really well designed and it's going to be a huge step up from your iOptron base. So the first thing you'll probably notice when you open up the William Optics base out of the box is that it's uh, quite a bit larger and heavier than the iOptron base. This one weighs about two pounds and it's quite a bit taller too. So that would be one caveat I would say is that if you're going to be doing a lot of hiking or backpacking and you want to take this base with you, it will take up more space in your bag and weigh you down just a little bit more. And frankly, if you're gonna be using a wide angle lens at night, this base is pretty overkill because you don't have to have really a precise polar alignment and you can still shoot four or five minutes. So I would just stick with the Ioptron base in that case. But if you're gonna be doing deep space astrophotography, then this base is a no brainer because when you're trying to do your polar alignment, the screws here are just so much smoother. They're easier to get a grip on. And that's really the main selling point of the William Optics base. Now, if you look here, we have two screws to adjust our altitude. That's a little bit different. Uh, on the Ioptron base, you just have a big knob that you turn and it's pretty imprecise. But with the addition of these two screws, you can do very, very small, smooth adjustments. And if you're gonna be using like the ASI Air or Sharp Cap to do your polar alignment, you'll definitely notice the increased accuracy of these screws. And it's the same thing with the azimuth screws here on the front. We can turn these much slower, they're easier to get a grip on, and the whole movement is just super smooth. And when you compare this side by side with the Ioptron base, it's night and day, and it really shows uh, just how much nicer the William Optics base is. Now, if you've read my Star Tracker buying guide, I also talk about the Skywatcher base, which costs about $65, and that one is kind of your in-between option. So the William Optics base, this is kind of your top end. It costs about $188, so it's not cheap. But if you're looking for something kind of in the middle, the Skywatcher base is probably a nice step up from the Ioptron base. It goes from zero to 90 degrees. The adjustments are a little bit smoother. And overall, I think it's a more versatile base. 
and that's really all there is to talk about in today's video review. It's a pretty short one. There's really not that much to get into just because it is a latitude base and it's good for two things really. That's just finding the polar alignment and making your knife uh, night a little bit easier with the azimuth and the altitude adjustment screws. So just to recap my most important points, this is the high latitude version. If you find yourself below 30 degrees though, you will have to take it apart make a small change and then from there you can reach as far as i'm aware 30 degrees down to about 10 degrees uh, and then you can always switch it back once you come back up north or wherever you're at in the world now moving on the screws are very easy to adjust and that's going to make your pore alignment a lot easier at night especially if you're going to be doing deep space astrophotography and you're going to use sharp cap or the asi air or something like that uh, but for those of you who are going to be hiking and doing milky way photography this base really is overkill and you don't need the precision that it offers because your pore alignment can be a couple of degrees off and you can still get pretty long exposures with a wide angle lens. So I hope this video review cleared everything up and you can now make a more informed decision if you're thinking about getting it but you weren't quite sure. Uh, so at the end of the day, I would definitely recommend this base. I'm probably going to pick one up myself for my 2020 gear setup just because I've had enough of dealing with the Ioptron base and frankly something's probably going to break on it pretty soon. I've been beating it up pretty bad and... I'm definitely going to enjoy the added precision and smoothness of the William Optics High Latitude Base for my astrophotography.